There's a question uh, from John John back in the back there. In the Y band, we use 600. Uh, yes, uh, John John's question was, uh, what sort of uh, exposure times do, were necessary to achieve the precisions that I reported here today? In the Y band, we took 600 second exposures, and in the H band, uh, which I didn't show here but was shown in previous talks, uh, we did 300 second exposures. The dark counts were generally about three electrons per second in the Y band and 30 electron per second in the H band. And at what magnitude was that? Uh, or was that for all your stars? I'm sorry, what magnitude was this for the stars? Yes. Um, the stars were generally bright stars. Uh, we used, um, let's see, H magnitudes and I magnitudes around five to seven, somewhere in that range. We didn't get much fainter. We, did certain, we didn't get much fainter than um, uh, CN Leo. That was our faintest target. And how much time would you need to, uh, on a typical M6 star? I'm sorry, can you, can you repeat if you were, that? If you were to observe, a, say, an M6 star, a very late spectral type, uh, do you know uh, what exposure time you would need to achieve something like 10 meters per second? Um, I'm not certain, but uh, with this test bed set up, uh, we're not, we weren't prepared to do particularly faint stars. Um, um, but CN Leo is uh, a late M dwarf, um, uh, but it's also the closest. Um, yeah. It, that's another question. Yeah. Um, quite a bit is known about aging of thorium argon cells. So typically, um, the aging depends on the number of hours they have been used. Do you know, have, have similar data about um, your thorium um, uranium neon cells? I don't, but I would expect uh, the same sort of phenomenon. Um, we never use a lamp more than uh, for a very extended period of time, and we've never observed the spectrum to change. Uh, the, the aging is certainly a concern, um, and I'm sure it's a concern for anyone using hollow cathode lamps. And uh, the best we can, I can suggest is to use a master like they do with harps. We saw in the last talk how the, uh, the red noise components uh, in the velocity signal set up lower bound for the velocity precision that you could expect. Can you comment a little on what your noise signature looks like and whether you expect a similar kind of floor? Yeah, well at this point we haven't gotten we haven't gotten too many points below um, 10 meters per second. Uh, one of the major sources of uncertainty uh, and noise is modal noise. Uh, the problem there is uh, in, it's easily visible in the H band when we were working with the cone. Um, but uh, the modal noise is also present in the Y band. Um, it appears that agitating the fiber in the H band uh, didn't work as well uh, for our flat fields. Um, and it's not yet clear why, but it may have been an input uh, issue. Um, but the modal noise is definitely one of our major problems. Um, the other is dispersion solutions. Um, so because we have modal noise in the comb spectra, it's harder to derive the uh, consistent dispersion solution. Uh, and in the uranium, we are um, we have to deal with we have to vet the line list very carefully in order to avoid uh, blends, both that we know of and that we don't know of. Yes, the, the ten meter per second that you you show here as, as your minimum probably uh, uh, error uh, currency is that on a single observation. Of, uh, of a star, or are you talking about multiple observations of the same star? It's multiple observations of the same star over several days. Ha, so how we, many? What's that? How many? Um, we did observations over uh, about a week. So we're achieving, and it takes some time for the detector to stabilize, uh, but we can do about a, a little over 10 meters per second over the course of a week. That's standard error in the in the mean. Any more questions? Just one point. It's on. <laughs> well, I'll just say one point that Stephen did mention is that the throughput of this has been really is very low, and that's it is a test bed, and uh, I do expect that we should be able to increase this by at least a factor. Single exposure signal noise, 
And of course, the Hawaii water ray is, has more problems than we really want to talk about. I think we have right to our people in Hawaii. Are there any more, are there any more questions? Let's thank the speaker and all of our speakers.